Depuis le début des années 1970, perceive our societies. The idea was then euphemized and set aside by uh, the invention of sustainable development, which became legitimate partly because it said that green growth was a possibility, except that this trend has come back in fashion in the year 2000 when people started talking about de-growth, a provocative word, de-growth, fairly atypical in the political sphere. Where does it come from? The first time the uh, term was used was during the controversies in 1972 after the uh, Meadows report was published on uh, the limits to growth. The authors then explained that after decades of uh, very quick growth, humankind was about to reach a threshold beyond which growth would no longer be possible, not only because the resources were finite, but also that this growth was not something we needed to wish for. Then several authors started talking about uh, zero growth, slowing down growth. And during the discussions, some authors even went as far as uh, stating that because the consumption level in uh, Western countries was already unbearable, richer countries could not be content with stabilizing growth. They actually had to reverse the trend and go towards a decline in growth or degrowth. The word was used for a few years in 72, 73, 74, but not specifically identified or stabilized. The word became stabilized later in 1979 when uh, the book written by Nicolas Georgescu Rogan, a Romanian researcher, was translated in French. He was a uh, widely acknowledged economist, but also somebody heterodoxic who dedicated part of his research trying to anticipate what it meant for humankind that fossil fuel resources were finite. One of the main conclusions he reached was that uh, the decades of growth were an exception in history, and an exception that was about to come to an end, a sort of parenthesis that was about to be uh, closed, and that we had to anticipate on this event, that the decades of growth would be followed by decades of uh, decline. When the, the papers contained in this book were translated, some authors, Jack, like Jacques Greenwald, helped him find another word, and the word they chose was degrowth, a provocative term, not chosen at random, because it does translate the economic theory according to which degrowth is not just a choice, it is humankind's fate, because our resources uh, are limited, but at the time the term did not uh, have much success and went unnoticed for many years until a new social movement started claiming uh, this uh, word as uh, what sustainable development had become over the years. They started questioning greenwashing as uh, a sort of uh, political operation and uh, sustainable Sustainable development had become the same idea as green growth, except that those, for those who were in favor of degrowth, green growth is simply impossible because our resources are finite. In 2002, degrowth started attracting movements, uh, social movements, which uh, expressed themselves in many books, associations, local initiatives, local groups, for political parties, etc. In all the books about degrowth, new Recurrent ideas kept cropping up again and again. The fact that sustainable development did not hold its promises, the fact that we were reaching a uh, fuel, an oil peak which was going to impose on us a drastic reduction in fuel consumption, the fact that uh, climate, uh, global 
warming uh, planet warming was going to impose on us new decisions. And finally, that after 2009 and the economic crisis, the return to strong growth in Western countries was more than unlikely. These were the ideas that were publicized in all the books you see on the slide. And amid this multiplicity of papers and publications, it was sometimes difficult to choose the strongest ideas. What is really degrowth in these different books? What do we refer to when we talk about degrowth? And there are several answers from the most pragmatic to the most uh, cosmic ones. On the pragmatic level, degrowth would be a new experimentation of uh, lifestyles which would depend less on growth and would be more sobriety oriented. But degrowth is also a social movement with a number of claims, with militants, activism, citizens uh, fighting to change things, for instance, by uh, opposing the project uh, that is supposedly the champion of green uh, growth, the uh, new airport in uh, the land area in southern France. And also, this is a political, degrowth is a political idea with environmentalists insisting on the fact that degrowth is an absolutely necessary condition for more social justice and redistribution of wealth. Degrowth means degrowth of the richest countries in the West, in the wealthy populations in the richest countries. And degrowth is also an economic paradigm insisting on the fact that the uh, end of fossil fuels is inevitable, and therefore the end of growth is just as inevitable. On the cosmic level, degrowth is also based on the uh, philosophical and anthropological reflection on the future of humankind after the uh, exuberance period that we're going through now, what will be left of our industrial civilizations, our great industrial civilizations once we have consumed all of the fossil energies or once we have been able to do without them in a more voluntaristic way. Be ranging from the most dramatic to the most philosophical aspects, degrowth swings permanently between anticipation of uh, our fate and formulation of a project. Fate is uh, about anticipating the inevitable exhaustion of fossil energies. It is going to happen sooner or later, and we will have to adjust. The project, on the other hand, is hope that we can uh, Think about uh, a uh, social organization which is desirable in a situation where uh, we have to deal with constraints regarding energies and materials. We have to find a society where we can live in happy sobriety or frugal abundance.